or 800k and you can simply expect a powerful level-headed discussion when the point of welfare programs comes up regardless of the possibility that everybody can concur that it would be attractive for the poor to have better lives the techniques proposed for getting from here to there are heap and accomplishing any kind of agreement is practically unimaginable best case scenario greater parts can be gathered to pass some enactment just to see it adjusted as the roll out up of legislatures change what we can concur on is that welfare fraud is genuine wrong and occupies reserves from the individuals who are really in destitution to the individuals who have made sense of how to diversion the system to profit furthermore don't imagine it any other way there are the individuals who have made decent lives for themselves by participating in illicit practices inside the welfare system at any rate until the point when they are gotten that is would you be able to envision a jail detainee figuring an approach to trick the system shouldn't something be said about in the measure of eight hundred thousand dollars in false medicaid benefits incidentally simply such a prisoner alexis norman has been prosecuted for doing quite recently that alexis c norman 46 of midlothian texas has been charged with criminal offenses resulting from a healthcare fraud conspiracy she ran from a prison that involved the submission of more than eight hundred ten thousand dollars in false claims to medicaid the United States announced. Attorney John Parker of the Northern District of Texas. Norman is scheduled to make her initial appearance in the federal court on July 14, 2017, before the U.S. Magistrate Judge Paul D. Stigney. There's no yearning here to show individuals how to confer welfare fraud, yet you need to consider how she did this. On August 4, 2015, Norman pledged guilty to one count of health care fraud in connection with a false billing scheme she ran using two companies she owned and operated, Greater Southwest Group, Inc. and Ellis County Community Services. As part of that scheme, Norman used the identities of licensed counselors and Medicaid clients without their knowledge or consent to submit claims to Medicaid for psychotherapy services that were not provided. You additionally need to think about how this kind of stuff figures out how to continue for so long without being identified. Did she have an associate outwardly? How could she relate with these substances from jail without the reality being identified? According to the indictment that was just unsealed, Norman ran a similar scheme while she was waiting for sentencing in her previous case, and continued to direct it after she was incarcerated. The indictment alleges that Norman, who was not licensed as a psychotherapist or another mental health provider, controlled and operated two counseling companies, Janus Children's Services, Inc., Janus, and Therapeutic Outreach Services, Therapeutic. As part of the scheme, according to the indictment, Norman and a co-conspirator applied for and obtained a group of Medicaid provider numbers for Janus and Therapeutic. They then obtained the individual Medicaid provider number of licensed mental health professionals by soliciting applications for job opportunities on Craigslist but not hiring individuals who applied. Norman and her co-conspirators used these numbers, together with the names, dates of birth, social security numbers and Medicaid numbers of approximately 156 Medicaid clients mostly minor children to submit claims for services that were not performed. So she had an accessory a co-schemer, outwardly who encouraged quite a bit of this. Norman is charged with one count of conspiracy to commit health care fraud, four counts of health care fraud, and four counts of aggravated identity theft. The indictment also includes a forfeiture allegation that would require the defendant, upon conviction, to forfeit to the U.S. any property traceable to the offense. Things being what they are, it would seem that Ms. Norman will have her stay in jail expanded. Thus. She's not going to make the most of her evil gotten picks up, which on the off chance that despite everything they exist, will probably be vomited and come back to the legislature as in any event fractional remuneration for the fraud she is claimed to have submitted. Do you need to think about what number of more like Miss Norman is out there? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. U. S. Department of Justice. Sean Hannity reveals truth on Hillary Clinton, she has no escape now. Sean Hannity may be a standout amongst the most abhorred conservative show host on the planet, however, 
The man is a wizard with regards to having the capacity to pinpoint precisely what is so amiss with the Democrats. Not exclusively what he be able to put to concisely in wording that everybody can see, however, he can likewise blend it up with the most eloquent twofold talk specialists that advanced governmental issues bring to the table. At whatever point it gives the idea that the liberals are going to strike fear into the hearts of Americans by pointing out some silly bit of evidence against Trump or one of alternate Republicans, Hannity is in that spot, prepared to do fight, for the most part as an exceptionally basic contention, the left is constantly observed to be liable for lip service. By and by, when the chips are down and it would seem that this will be an awful week for the president. Sean Hannity goes for the final death blow by demonstrating that there are a few columnists left in the field of news coverage. He has swooped in the nick of time to pose the extremely strong inquiry, is Hillary liable of collusion with the Chinese government? The Gateway Pundit, conservative Sean Hannity tweeted out today that Wikileaks leaked a document that shows the Clinton campaign discussing a private, off-the-record meeting with Chinese Ambassador Kui. Ambassador Kui set up a meeting with Hillary Clinton's campaign manager John Podesta during the campaign. Not that any of this will ever observe the light of day on a CNN or MSNBC broadcast, yet stunning. This is what is implied by the correct when we discuss the false reverence and the through and through the fake news that plagues systems and daily papers today. It can put a 100% accentuation on Donald Trump Jr. having a four and a half minute meeting with a Russian legal counselor one who was given unconditional authority access to the United States by the Obama organization, notwithstanding being already turned down for a visa, but then, when a post-it note is stuck on their temples that peruse, Hillary colluded with China in an off-the-record meeting during her 2016 campaign. They have the dauntlessness to point back at Trump and shout, Russian collusion. Genuine conservatives won't ever consider this to be something besides simply one more Clinton scandal to be hidden away from plain view. That's the pitiful reality of the present newscasting and why it's still indispensable essential that news locales like American conservative Harold keep on pointing out reality when we see it. Hannity may merit an award for his tenacious assurance. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. The Gateway Pun Sabotage Federal judge goes for President Trump, criminal illegals now allowed to. Do you get the feeling that we have more than one court system in this nation? That is most likely not an ideal method for putting it. What we have are two distinctive ways to deal with comprehension and applying the law. One takes a gander at the first expectation and case law as points of reference, and alternate takes a more dissident and dynamic approach, finding new interpretations with respect to social standards. You ought to have a smart thought on which side of this contention we dissent. We have cases of the last approach turning up in choices with respect to President Trump's endeavors to authorize immigration laws and deport illegal aliens. One that has raised its head as of late includes Iraqis booked for deportment whose deportment has been hindered by a government judge. What has occurred here is that this government judge in Detroit has discovered that these illegals may be oppressed if come back to their nation of origin of Iraq, and has requested that they can't be extradited until the fulfillment of a trial, one in which the ACLU, not surprisingly, is contending the case for the illegals. A Detroit federal judge ruled on Tuesday that the government cannot deport nearly 200 illegal immigrants from Iraq due to concerns that they could be prosecuted if they returned to their home country. U.S. District Judge Mark Goldsmith found that he had the legal authority to stay deportations indefinitely while the detained Iraqis appealed their cases to the federal court. In his ruling, Goldsmith said that repatriating the Iraqis would expose them to substantiated risk of death, torture, or other grave persecution before their legal claims can be tested at the court, reports Reuters. What else do we think about these Iraqis? Most of the ICE detainees are Iraqi Kurds or Chaldean Christians who are living in the Detroit metro area. Advocates for Iraqis say they have been living in the United States for years and does not present a threat to public safety, but ICE claims all of those arrested have criminal convictions, many for serious offenses including murder rape and drug trafficking. 
simply the kind of individuals we need in our nation. Also, we ask why urban communities like Detroit and Chicago are suspects of wrongdoing. What does the ACLU need to say in regards to this, just as we couldn't figure? Due to the unique threats faced in their native country, the ACLU says, Iraqi detainees should be allowed to appeal their deportations to the federal courts. The Department of Justice, on the other hand, argued that only immigration courts have jurisdiction in the matter. Along these lines, on the off chance that they have submitted genuine offenses, for example, murder and assault, is the ACLU contending that they ought to be allowed to remain in the U.S. so they can serve time in jail? Most likely not. Despite outstanding orders of removal, many Iraqis have been allowed to stay in the United States. Because until recently, Iraq had refused to accept them for repatriation. Iraq agreed to take back the detainees in March as part of a deal to remove the country from the revised travel ban of Trump. It is telling when these individuals' own nation doesn't need them back. Says something in regards to Iraqi leaders' sentiment of their incentive to society. Other than that, it's simply one more exertion by a liberal legal system to square anything President Trump endeavors to do. Consequently, no curveballs here, simply one more swamp needs draining. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. The Daily Call Massive news Tillerson goes head to head with McCain, puts him to his place with one sentence. John McCain has proven to our country time and time again why he is incompetent. All that you need to do is listen to him speak for a couple of seconds, and you will get the gist. Rex Tillerson was having none of his nonsense. Washington Times reported that it all started when McCain attempted to make everyone believe that Tillerson was hurting everyone's feelings and needed to stop. McCain quoted these mystical oppression policies, and eventually, Rex had enough. His reply shut down McCain, You don't know what you're talking about, John. We think that this response by Rex is perfect. Essentially, John was saying that Tillerson was passing policies that were meant to be for transactional purposes, instead of what felt good deep in your heart. In his piece, McCain wrote, Tillerson, has, sent a message to oppressed people everywhere don't look to the United States for hope. Here is the problem. We are not the international super friends. In the United States, we don't have an unlimited amount of space, resources, and time. Priorities must be set. If priorities are in place, it would only make logical sense that we would help the people here before we would work on helping everyone else in the world. McCain honestly believes that we need to go on a mission to help everyone else in the world and let everyone here suffer. It is odd, his feelings and emotions only kick in once he is speaking about outside of the U.S. border. There is a reason that Tillerson is on Trump's cabinet. On that same note, there is also a reason why the only time McCain has a voice that can be heard is when he is writing trash that passes for New York Times opinion pieces. We are not surprised that McCain is still trying to push his agenda through. He may have run on the Republican ticket, but make no mistake, he is a liberal in right-wing clothes. Most people who took the time to read through some of the things he has stated in the past agree that it couldn't be any clearer. Look at this recent argument for an excellent example of his values. He is critiquing the Republican Party for putting our country first. Ironically enough, one of his slogans when running for president was country first. It sure doesn't look that way now. He has what can only be called imposter syndrome. Don't let him fool you, Rex obviously didn't. It is going to be interesting to see if McCain is going to formulate a rebuttal to Tillerson's single sentence. Personally, we doubt it. It is going to end up lost in the mix when he comes out for his next attack against a policy or person who makes his poor feelings hurt. We don't have time or resources to take care of everyone outside of our country. We need to get everything in good shape here first. You cannot do 15 million things at once and expect to be successful. The fact that he thought his critique was accurate is laughable. If it were up to McCain, he would probably kick everyone out of their homes here and move in people from other countries that deserve nicer things. What a joke! 
Do you take McCain seriously as a Republican? Share this story on Facebook and let us know because we want to hear your voice. Source, The Angry Patriot. Caught. What Nancy Pelosi just said to Trump's grandkids on live TV will end her career. Just days after Kathy Griffin beheaded President Trump and attacked his 11-year-old son Barron Trump, Nancy Pelosi went on live TV and took it even farther. See video below. While speaking at a press conference, Nancy Pelosi stooped to a new low by attacking Trump's grandchildren. She was attempting to bash Trump for pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, which he should have, but she just couldn't stop herself from bad-mouthing children. Pelosi said, How is he going to explain to his grandchildren what he did to the air they breath, assuming they breath air? Assuming they breathe air? Are you kidding me? Nancy Pelosi is such a nasty woman. Watch this clip then share on Facebook if you are ready for her to step down. First of all, Nancy, drop the oat about the children BS. You just tried to play the liberal sympathy card by making it about children and then two seconds later you attacked Trump's children. There's no better way to end your career than attacking innocent children, just ask Kathy Griffin. Source, Subject Politics. unthinkable. Look which Supreme Court justice is about to leave. President Trump has kept his word to conservatives. He put a conservative on the Supreme Court when he appointed Justice Neil Gorsuch. Now, NBC News and MSNBC host Christopher Hayes have announced that they think that is about to leave. Here is what Roger Stone said about the issue. NBC's Christopher Hayes confirmed the chance that Kennedy may retire very soon. Hayes thinks that this could lead to the repeal of Roe v. Wade. This is great. We are not going to stop winning at all. Share this so that every conservative in this country sees what is happening. Are we about to get another Supreme Court seat? Source, Liberty Writers. 